Hi, Wanderers. Welcome to Wanderlust. I'm Ron. And I'm Amanda. And this is Military Chatter. This is the series where we talk about our life in the military. And right now, we're filming the series about moving, right? Yes. Moving in the military. And, oh, it's also during the quarantine coronavirus thing. And so some of us cannot get our hair cut right now. So we're wearing hats for the rest of the series. That's not why I'm, why I'm wearing a hat. So this is episode four in our moving series, and we're going to talk about... Um, our philosophy and mindset when it comes to moving. Because a lot of people, when you say you're in the military, they're like, oh, how do you move so much? How can you do that? And it's just part of the lifestyle. That's the main question that we do get yeah. also about moving. Like, you, you how can get, you do it? Yeah, you sort of get used to it. I mean, it's, it's, it's just it's what we expect to do. Now... We probably have maybe a little bit of advantage coming into the military is that we came into the military, um, me as a chaplain, from being a Methodist pastor, and we also move. Then we just moved around Arkansas. Right. Now the options are a little more. And we have to do a lot of it more. ourselves. Right? Yes. Uh, but now the options are just more. So, so we kind of came into this since we've been married. You know, the idea of being at least pseudo transient is part of what we kind of signed up with. Right, and it was part of what I really liked about the whole thing was that I grew up in one house until I was in high school, I think I was 16, and my parents moved across town, so I didn't move far, I <laughs> just moved literally from one side of town to the other. And um, then I finished my last two years of high school and moved out. So I kind of grew up in the same place. I graduated high school with the same kids that I started kindergarten with. Like, you can go back and look at all of our yearbooks and there was just not a lot of moving. But for some reason, I love that. And so when you first said, what do you think about joining the military? My first question was, do we get to move? <laughs> Because I just wanted to go. Like, I guess I've yeah. always just wanted to go. Yeah, and similar. So I, I, we moved once when I was growing up, when I was, I uh, think, seventh grade. I actually did move schools from the, the city school to the county school and, and all those sorts of things. But I spent my whole life, for the most, I mean, basically growing up in the same, you know, uh, hometown. So um, I don't know that I consciously thought about wanting to move, but it, it certainly is something that we have enjoyed and uh, gotten a lot of benefits out of and it's something I'm just used to um, and, and you kind of get at least I think at, le at least for us you kind of get in a rhythm where after about three years in the place you kind of get like All right, where we're going next yeah where we're going next. which is which will be great if we get to do what we want when we retire which is to just travel full-time but um, maybe maybe there's something to that, like staying still in one place. Like I definitely miss having like really good friends that our kids can grow up together. Like I think that is the one thing that I miss about what I think yeah, our yeah. life would be like if we weren't so, moving. So you, you sacrifice that kind of community, which I do remember, you know, growing up. I mean, I, you know, I can think back to my hometown and even when I go back now, you know, there are people that I just, I've known basically my entire life. But in this lifestyle, you get a different sort of community uh, that's spread all over the world, um, and uh, you learn the ability to 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 drop in to the lives of people, and, and I think you learn to be a little bit more present um, than, than maybe, maybe you do otherwise, because you don't take. I don't feel you take the time you have with the people as much for granted as, as maybe you do when they're just always there. So, you know, we, we have friends who, uh, when they come and visit, they drop in and it, it's like we haven't missed a beat, um, you know, and, and, and then they're back gone. Um, we also have the advantage of, depending on where they are, we've got, we've got free places to stay uh, in a lot of key so, locations. So, yeah, that's one thing that I think people outside of the military, when they think that they're gonna drive somewhere or they're gonna go on vacation or go visit something, like if somebody's coming up here, okay, and they wanna go do all the sightseeing stuff here in, in South Dakota, they would just get a hotel room or get an Airbnb. Like it doesn't occur to them to go, oh, I know somebody that lives there, let me call them and see if we can stay with them. Like that's not the mentality of normal, <laughs> 
civilian people, no. I guess. No. However, military people, because we know what it's like to just have to move at the spur of the moment, I guess, and just be super flexible in travel plans, it's just easier for us to say, just throw a blow up mattress on the floor and we'll sleep on it for two days and then we're gone. We yeah. just want to come see something. And so I think that's something that um, well, is hard for people well, to understand. Well, I think that, I think that comes from, from sort of the transient and, and the, the being, when you're with people, you're fully invested with them. So, so yeah, I mean, we love our, our we have an, an open house policy. If we have friends coming through and they want to come see the Black Hills or anything like that, we're like, are right, you're staying here unless they have a compelling reason. Right. Um, and it, and it, you know, and maybe it, maybe we're weird. I think we're a nice, normal military family so far as everybody knows. But you know, we would rather have people here, and, and we don't. To us, that's not a disruption. To our lives. Right. Well, and some of that probably comes from the foster parent stuff That's true because too. we were kind of already trained to have random people show up at the spur of the moment, and then we have extra children and we have to figure out how to integrate them into our lives and what we're going to do. So that could be like a uniquely us it thing. Be. But I, just now, um, last week, I was messaging my friend who lives all the way in South Carolina, and I was like, um, we want to come. I want to take my mother there to see some stuff. Do you recommend a place for us to stay? It was just going to be me and my mother. And she wrote me back and she's like, um, with us? Like, that's where you need to stay? And I thought, oh, yeah, like, I should have thought about that to begin with. But I still have that. I don't want to impose on other people. But when people come here, I do want them staying with us. There's just something cool about being able to stay up as late as you want to and play games and talk and hang out and then them not have to say, well, we need to get back to the hotel yeah. or we need to go, whatever. Like, it just eats into your hangout time. And I would rather hang out than do that. But that is um, not the core of our philosophy about moving. Right. I want to talk about... Um, the places or or the places that we've been and how fun we've found them. So so I think the first thing is is one thing we've been unique in in, in our, our time in the military is that this move right now that we're waiting to happen uh, right. in the midst of all this um, is the first time we've moved from um, uh, what they call a CONUS move, so moved without going overseas. I have to put CONUS. It means continental United right. States. But to move from one state to another and not have to go overseas, um, and, and so that's what we've always done, and that 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 makes its own unique philosophy because when you land at the overseas location, you've got a finite amount of time that you're there. Right, you know at the beginning when you get there. So so that deals into one of our philosophies, which which is, um, and we've done much better at this assignment, which is to just dive in because you have a certain amount of time. So, you know, you, you can't just go, oh, and we actually learned that from our very first assignment where we our were. Our very first assignment was Colorado Springs, and I was so excited. I printed off, like, free things to do in Colorado Springs, like, when we got there, and I just thought that we had plenty of time. Like, you start living like a local almost immediately. Even if you don't intend to, it just happens. Your days just turn into normal days, and you start living your life, and then two years almost three years 27 in, months they call and say hey you have to leave in 65 days and i was like wait i didn't do half the things on, on the free list much less the other stuff there was to do so, so. Well, the first philosophy that we, we've adapted is that when we get there we make a plan a loose plan uh but but here are the things that we want to do um and we we i think this assignment we've been most successful well, and that part of that is because of this channel, like because well, yeah. you guys we're also we're also motivated to show people the things that there are to do, and I mean we naturally like to do them. But, but. we pretty much just about exhausted everything in, the, in quote unquote the local area within like a two or three hour drive, right? Uh, to do while we're here, so there's not a lot left that we're going to leave and go. Oh man, we just didn't get to that. So, yeah, so that's well, the first philosophy is that is, is that diving right in and um, in, in trying to integrate. Yeah, and that, that's always been not the let's go sightsee part of diving in. That's the easiest part. The diving in with the people has always been the hardest part for me because I'm still super attached to the people that I just left behind. And so I'm in the protect mode where I think I don't 
I don't want to do that again because it hurts whenever you have to say bye and you have to move and then as much as you say oh we'll keep in touch you will and you'll message them occasionally or um, at the beginning maybe you message a lot and then things start to come up and other people start to get in and they have their own lives and you have your own lives and then you don't stay in contact and the coolest part about that it, though is if I ever needed to go to Alaska for some reason, I know three different people right now who live there that I could send a message to and say, hey, we're coming, got a place for us. Like, even if I haven't talked to them in six months, we lived with each other in Spain, mm. right next to each other, and I absolutely know that I could say, hey, we're coming, even if I haven't talked to you in eight months, we're coming. And do you have a place for us to stay? And so it's it's a double-edged sword, I guess. Yeah. It's great and it's horrible, but what we learned, especially at this assignment, is jump in with people yeah. too. So uh, there is a unique aspect of this if you go overseas, and that, that's referencing the fact that when you land another acronym you're going to, have to throw up. Okay. Is the DROS okay. uh, date expected return from overseas? And so when you land, so like both of our assignments have been two-year overseas assignments. So we went accompanied, uh, so it's two years with the family. So when we landed in Spain in August of 2015, we knew we were leaving in August of 2017. Right. Um, unless we decided for some reason to extend, which we knew we weren't going to do, or or something went weird. Uh, that sort of thing. We knew when we were leaving. Which we, and, you don't know that on state side of side. Right. You don't know when we're leaving. You know, you know it's going to be close to four years or something, but, but things could get weird. But for the most part, when you hit overseas, that's when you're going to be there, um, um, you know, barring right. extenuating service. So you, you immediately ask everybody, as soon as you meet them, you're like, hi, what's your DROS? And, and you, <laughs> you do that, not... Not because that's the end all be all, but if, if I get there in August and this person I met is leaving at the end of September, I'm not, it's not worth it to invest a it's, lot. Uh, that of, sounds of, horrible, but it's really not. Yeah. Uh, and when, you, when you're on your way out, it's that same thing. When people just arrive, awesome, you know, you're a great person, but I'm probably not going to get real close to you because... I know I'm leaving. It, in a yeah, month. and it's almost like a running joke too because you, you'll be introduced to somebody. Generally, you're all together in a big group and you're like, hey, um, and then I would say something like, my name is Amanda, but you don't want to get to know me because I'm leaving in two months. Like the end. Because yeah. I don't need them. I mean, they don't need to getting attached to us and then us leaving two months. I mean, it's bad enough. Wherever they're coming from, they're already having to leave people and say goodbye. And so they don't want to get attached to somebody that's leaving again in two months. Like it, you just want to find the people that joined or got there the same time you did. It's almost like you're all in a class together yeah. <laughs> and that you're really graduating just... at the same time. And and it does just happen um, a lot of times where you find people who have a DROS that's similar to yours or in the same group of months well, and it makes it easier. Well, uh, at the, the Spain assignment, my friend Dave, got there shortly before we did. Uh, we left virtually at, at the same time. And we, right. I would say we still message through the work messenger a couple times a week. If I haven't, he's, he's still overseas uh, uh, in, in, in Europe. Uh, so there's a time difference thing. But, but if I right. see him on or he sees me on, we, we say, hey, how's it going? Um, but that was built over those those nearly two years right. uh, of having coffees in my, coffee in my office and you know, complaining about stuff and, and he bonding over. He worked with uh, the boys on Scout stuff. Too. Yes, he did. He he was he was great. He uh, helped Price a lot. So you know, so there was that investment there. Um, but we knew we had two years yeah. <laughs> to make the investment. So and so so it gets a little weird in an assignment like that though, because we had folks who were there had been there a year when we got there. So we had a year with them, uh, right. and we're still pretty close with them. Um, but uh, again, it's it's not that you're trying to be a jerk or 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 say you know, that you don't want to, to be friendly, but you also are very aware of, of the limitations. And, and some of it is self-protective because yeah. what if I got to hang out with you? Man, what if we'd have been here the whole time together? And, 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 you, and you can mourn what you, um, what well, you even think if you could you, have had. Even if you get close to them, they leave in three months, you still have over a year and a half left there. Yeah. So you're starting back over at scratch. Like, oh, now I have to find more people to hang yeah. out with. So, I mean, it is self-preservation 
in a lot of ways. And what we've learned um, after coming here is, um, or what I learned specifically, I would always give myself six months in every assignment that we've had. I say no to everything for the first six months. Like, I just want to cocoon myself and feel sorry for myself, really, about the people that I'm missing from the last place where we were. And we landed here in August, and I specifically remember thinking, I'm not doing that this time. Like, so we landed here in August, and in September, I walked to a person's house that I had never met, that, except for a message. That's huge. Except for a message that I had sent her over email, because she sent out an invitation for a Bible study. And I messaged her and said, can I have more information about this? I think I would like to come. And so a month after we landed here, I was full in with them, this new group of people that I met, and they are my best friends here. And we're all already sad because we know it's coming that we're gonna have to leave. And so I'm trying to still be here and stay present for this end of this season that we're calling it before we move on to the next one. I'm excited about Texas. I'm excited about the things that we're gonna do there. I'm excited about the people that we're gonna meet when we get there, but I'm trying really hard to not I, disconnect. I, 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 well, I think it's important to point out that those people you're talking about are primarily civilian. Right. So, so they're not transient. Now, now, what is cool about that, if we can convince them to do that, which we finally did with, with my best friend, uh, during this assignment is, is we want those people who aren't military wherever we go to next come visit I know I told them I was like you guys now have somebody in Texas right. you can come see in Texas and and for us personally we love when people come visit to be tour guide I don't, we don't care how many times we've been to Mount Rushmore it's awesome to see it through their eyes um, oh, and especially and those little places that people don't know about or don't necessarily look up like People know that the Crazy Horse Monument exists, but taking them there and showing it to them when all they know about of this area is Mount Rushmore, that's what everybody knows, Mount Rushmore. So to take them to something cool, like when we lived in Maryland, everybody wanted to come and go to D.C. Like everybody wants to go to Washington, D.C. I get it. It is awesome. But we were able to introduce them to Fort McHenry, which is in Baltimore, and it's where Francis Scott Key wrote the National Anthem during the War of 1812. And it is one of my most favorite monuments in the whole country. And nobody pays that much attention to it because when they come the, to that area, they want to spend all their time in D.C. And we'll go to the National Mall. Right, which makes total sense. There's nothing wrong with it. But it, I just like the ability to show people these, like, cool things that not a lot of people go to. Absolutely. So one more mindset, maybe rule number two that we have after getting there and jumping in. The other mindset is open-mindedness when you come to a location. I firmly believe that every location in the military can be a great assignment. Every Absolutely. assignment can be a great assignment. Every assignment also can be the worst assignment you've ever had. Now, I know this is nothing to do with what's happening at work because I understand that you get a bad supervisor or you get a bad boss and your work can stink no matter where you live or what's going on. But barring that part of it, like if your job is neutral, let's say, then the place that you live can become the best place, the best assignment, or the worst assignment. And we think that a ton of that has to do with the attitude you Absolutely. bring into the assignment. So it's definitely your attitude because, I mean, yeah, I mean, we're, we're in the Black Hills, South Dakota. And last year, it snowed 9 out of 12 months. Yeah. That can be... Can, can, can bring you down, especially if you're not a snow person. Uh, I've been TDY to, to Alaska, to Anchorage, Anchorage a few times, and there are people who just, that's where their job has to take them, and, and they're not an outdoorsy kind of person, right. and that can, be, that can be a hard assignment. But a lot of it is your attitude, and, and, and the, 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 the things I always go back to when we, I talk about this with people is it, it's, it's you, for the most part, the assignment outside of work, because you, you got a little control, little control over that. But but all the other things, that's all about how you choose to engage with it. And so you know, we've been in Turkey, we've been in Spain, and, and predominantly when I talk to people as a chaplain and they talk, they complain about the assignment. Oh, this is no fun, that sort of thing. And I follow up, well, what have you done while you've been here? Nothing. And, and <laughs> generally, the people who who for whom those overseas assignments are horrible assignments. 
They barely left the base. Right. Well, and even in places like this, yep. uh, even some of the highest ranked bases, um, people say, oh, I don't want to go there. And you're like, or I had a horrible time there. And you're like, why? What did you do? Or what did you not like? Like, there is something for everybody. Uh, but, so the, but you have a theory. I do have a theory that when people tell you, like if you ask a military family that's been in it at least, I'll say 10 to 15 years, okay? And you say, what is your worst assignment? So their worst assignment is going to have nothing to do with that location. It's going to have everything to do with what was going on in their life. I think two things. Number one, if they're not having a good time in their marriage, that's going to make the assignment not good. Like if something bad is happening in their marriage. Second, if they have little kids, like infant kids, yeah. um, it starts to go away more at the toddler stage because around military bases, there are tons of things to do for toddlers. But when you have those newborn babies, zero to two, it becomes, you become more stuck in your house because you can't really go and do a lot of things with toddlers unless you're super determined. Now, there are people that take their six week baby and go hike wherever they want to go and they have no problem with it. But it's those people that are not really determined to get out. They probably could with a nudge, well, but, but you give them little babies and then they're just trapped. But if you then pair that with maybe a, a job with a challenging schedule or someone who works shift right. work or something like that and they've got small kids it becomes nearly impossible to get out and, and so I think that there's maybe not ca causation but definitely correlation uh, that when right. you say hey what was your worst assignment they say that and you go well how were you if they have kids how were your kids they go oh they were they were uh, you know three under six at the time and you're like yeah that that's why right. because it was challenging right. to get out and just do anything, much less sometimes do the things that you want to do right. because you got a two and a four year old. Um, and, and you know, maybe you're in DC, gray area, and you want to go to the Smithsonian. That don't work real well with two and four year olds because they don't have a whole oh. lot of patience for going through exhibits. So, so that's right. definitely, I think, something that, that plays into it. Yeah. So we think the majority of it, though, is your attitude going into Absolutely. it. So if you go in with an open mind and determined to find something about it that you enjoy and something about it that's fun, then that's what you're going to find. Your attitude determines your altitude. Thanks for joining us as we talked about kind of our philosophy as it comes to this, this transient lifestyle and, and moving. So we hope that uh, you enjoyed it, and we'll see you next time. Bye, guys. Do you just read posters in your office all the time? I live in platitudes. Yeah, I got it. Because I got to have a pithy word for somebody in my hip pocket all the time. Do they like it? Generally. No, I think they pretend like they do. Well, they don't tell me any difference, so that's fine. <laughs>